The following post talks about child pornography, so if anyone listening to this is sensitive to the topic, please refrain from listening to this video. We've all seen popular sites on the deep web, websites which are normally indexed by grams like RAMP, Agora, and Middle Earth. But a few days ago, I found something very disturbing on the deep web. I knew if I kept looking around on the deep web, sifting through paste bins and website lists for the deep web, I'd eventually find some pretty weird but interesting stuff. I guess my addiction to doing this first began with the market evolution about a year ago, whereby I saw marijuana, cocaine, heroin, guns, fake passports, money, and other services. It was amazing, I thought. My morbid curiosity got the better of me, although I honestly never ordered anything off of those sites because I was too scared and didn't have the time to figure out how to set up my own Bitcoin wallet. My journey had continued with me finding some weird forms for weird fetishes and government documents. I heard so many stories about snuff film and CP websites on Reddit and elsewhere that people often said that child pornography makes up a large percent of the dark web, which at the given time I found very hard to believe. Things got weird the other day. I found a list of about a thousand websites on the d deep web posted by an anonymous user. I started visiting every website to see what I could find. I found a link which looked weird. I couldn't remember what it even was, but it looked like an aliases for cute boys or something. Straight away, red flags in my head started going off, and I kept thinking to myself to not click on it. But obviously, morbid curiosity got the better of me. The website was called Boy Videos Version 4.0. If you google it or search it up on the hidden wiki, you'll find out what it is, but to save you all the trouble and mental scarring, yes, it is exactly what you're thinking. It is a form for homosexual child pornography. The homepage itself didn't actually have anything on it other than threads and boards. Now, I'm quite a strong person who's not usually affected by things. However, what I saw on this website sickened me to the core, and is still affecting me days later causing me to even lose sleep. The following threads that I saw were entitled Toddler, 4 years plus, 10 years plus, Jailbait. There were also a load of discussion boards. One thing that got me the most was the number of posts and registered users. The Toddler thread actually had over 50,000 posts. Many other threads had tens and thousands of posts too, with tens and thousands of users too. It was truly horrifying. I noticed a thread called links, obviously a thread whereby users could share links for similar websites. I clicked on that thread and managed to steer away from any pictures and videos and I found a fucking ton, and I mean a ton, of links to active websites, which were all child pornography. I have a young boy in my family who is closely related to me. He's two years old and it sickens me to think that things like this are floating around the deep web. This story ends where I forwarded all of the links into agencies which cooperate with LE to ensure the websites are taken down. I erased the links from my PC completely as I don't want to go back there, but I am curious to see if the websites are still up. Thanks for reading guys. This really affected me more than I thought it would, but I hoped by writing this would help get it off my chest. Feel free to ask any questions below and I will reply. Obsidian 157 Number two. This story happened to my friend on the deep web. I've had pretty scary experiences too, but mine was a few years ago. This story happened to my friend just one week ago. For those who don't know, the deep web is pretty much the internet that isn't indexed by search engines like Yahoo, Google, Bing, etc. It can only be accessed by special software such as Tor. To give you some context, this is the friend that showed me how to get onto the deep web. He has always been really fascinated with it, but after my horror story experience with deep web hackers, he pretty much took a long break. He didn't resume using the deep web until about a year after my story, but he didn't tell anyone. He would buy stolen Apple products, drugs, etc. About a week or two ago, he was buying cocaine. It wasn't from the seller he normally buys from though, it was really cheap. So he gave the seller his address and a fake email he used so they could stay in contact until the deal was done. He wasn't too worried, this guy seemed professional, and it was the same procedure for most of his purchases. 
His friend told him to ship it in a movie case or something so his mom wouldn't expect it to have drugs. This was probably his biggest mistake. He let the man know he was just a teenager. But my friend isn't the most careful of people. A few days later, his mom walks in the house and hands my friend a movie that he ordered online. He took it and opened it up, but inside there wasn't any cocaine, just a piece of folded up paper. He opened it and read. Hey, there was a small problem. Email me for details. At the bottom, the man had left a new email for my friend to contact. My friend got onto his email and asked the guy what the problem was. He responded, Something has happened. If I were to send it to you, it could easily be traced back to me, and we would both be caught. Meet me at the elementary school at 7 p.m. We will just do this in person. The school wasn't too far away, so my friend told my mom he was staying the night at my house, and he headed off to meet the man. He called me and asked if I could be there with him, but I was really busy with my schoolwork, so I couldn't. I did tell him to take a knife or something, though, just in case things went wrong. When we got to the parking lot outside of the school, he heard a car honking its horn. He saw it was a Jeep, but the license plate of the vehicle had been covered up in what I assumed was duct tape. The windows were tinted very dark. The man got out of his car and gave my friend the drugs. My friend paid him. It seemed like everything went fine. My friend got in his car and sat there a bit in order to call and tell me everything was fine. He noticed when he had hung up, the man was still there though. Why was he waiting? He didn't think too much of it and drove off. When he got to the first red light, he noticed the man's car was right behind him. He was getting a little nervous, but kept driving. When he reached his neighborhood, the man was still following him, so he decided it would be a bad idea to lead him to his house. He instead turned into the next neighborhood and took a whole bunch of random turns, hoping to lose the man. Eventually, he no longer saw the car, so he pulled the car into his garage and called it a day. That night, he noticed the sound of the car engine as he looked out his window and saw the man's car, parked in his driveway. He got wide-eyed and snuck downstairs and peered through the window. Inside the car, the man was smoking a cigarette and talking on his phone. However, in the passenger seat, he also saw a second man. The second one was a lot more suspicious looking, even more so than the shady drug dealer man. The second one had messed up hair, a trashy shirt, and while it was hard to see, he could almost make out a scar from a massive burn on the side of his neck to his face. He kept watching the two men until the second man began to look out his window, more and more often. Eventually, the two men were just staring at the window my friend was watching them from. My friend had decided that he had enough and was going to call the police. He didn't care if he would get in any trouble at this point. He moved away from the window and called the police who told him to grab a weapon or something to defend himself in case they broke in. He had waited about five minutes before he noticed a figure was quietly coming out of his mother's room down the hall. His mother was still sleeping. The man had shut the door behind him and noticed my friend had seen him. The figure sprinted towards my friend with what looked like a knife raised in his hand. My friend grabbed a pot from a nearby table and threw it at the figure. It hit him in the face and shattered. The man screamed and fell to the floor. My friend turned on the lights and saw the second man with the burn rolling on the floor. His face was covered in bloods and shards of glass. His right eye had tons of blood pouring out. He must have hit pretty hard from the plant. As the man began to slowly get up, my friend had grabbed the kitchen knife and drove it into the man's shoulder. Another scream could be heard by the man. The man began to stumble over to the front door when police sirens could be heard. Both of the men were caught right on sight, but my friend's mom had been killed. Her throat was slit, and she had stab wounds and duct tape covering her mouth. The friend was arrested for drug possession, and his trial was coming up in a few days. Because he lost his mom, because of it. So, I don't think him or I will be visiting the deep web anytime soon.